Hello, LGBTQ plus DL men, women who circulate love and support us. And if you don't identify with any of those labels, guess what? You're still able to subscribe to the channel. I'm who you dying to be. Well, somebody cop all these groupies a ticket because I'm who they dying to me. I'm in the city, I drop a location and all of the killers come out. These niggas be fighting for y'all, but they play the back when them killers is out. When them killers is out. So, very special video today. And it was after I have watched um, just, I guess, one video about um, just hilarious commenting on um, Nikki or something like that. And I want to say this without even um, truly acknowledging what that comment was about. I've been thinking about this for quite some time. I've said in the past, and I've mentioned it in other videos, that I recorded a video about three years ago that I deleted, and it was on my old YouTube account. And I recently have realized that a lot of things that I spoke about in that video have resurfaced and somewhat manifested. Am I kind of looking cross-eyed at you guys? Anyway, <laughs> mm. girl, get it together. I've been drinking, I've been drinking, rosé. <laughs> no, okay, seriously. I think that Nicki Minaj is somewhat misunderstood in a way. And as a being or person that has experienced other Sagittarius, and I am a Libra Scorpio cusp for y'all that do not know. I truly think that some of the things and some of the ways that Nikki raps and presents her artistic value within her creations is just misunderstood. It goes over a lot of people's heads. A lot of people are just not tuned in or I didn't want to say this but they're just not intelligent enough to understand her way of the way that she creates her raps or um, like her metaphors and I think that because I somewhat became aware of how to um like when she does double entendres and things like that i sort of understood how to do those things because of nikki right and so i think that a lot of times when people are listening to our raps they think about it from a just like with the with the medium and for y'all that have been on like listening to this channel for a while you may know that, and some of y'all may say, oh, well, you don't have a lot of followers, so how long have you been on this channel? But anyway, that's not the point. What I'm saying is, for y'all that have been tuned in, you're aware that I identify with being a psychic medium. And so, when, before I became spiritually enlightened, I was a barb and... Now I listen to music and have sort of a different perspective on listening to music. What I can say though is that when I listen to Nikki's music and I've heard how people comment and say certain things like, you know, she's trying not to get replaced. I think she would enjoy having the free time to be able to be a mom to her child and live her luxurious life and just make appearances every now and then. That's what it seems like. But at the same time, it's just like because people aren't able to sort of step into the role that she has sort of carried 
or somewhat be able to carry the role that she has somewhat done for a while. And what I mean by that is that when people look for a female rapper to deliver for a feature, it has been Nicki Minaj that has delivered. And I'm not saying that there's not other female rappers that can sustain and rap, but what I'm saying is to consistently do it, it's been Nicki Minaj. And I think that people often see her as a threat rather than uplifting her and saying, good job. I think that a lot of people think, oh, her and this other this other being have had a beef, so I like this other being more than I like Nikki, so now I'm going to take, I'm going to, you know, say, well, you know, she's just this type of person or whatever. You know, I think that when I heard, even when I heard Bomb Bomb, right? And she had a line in Bomb Bomb that was like, um, hold on. It wasn't Bomb Bomb, it was Big Difference. But hold on, I gotta think about it. She said in that Big Difference, I'm who they trying to be. They trying to me, right? I'm who they trying to be. It looks like you're trying to me. When she said, it looks like you're trying to me, that was kind of like a, would you call that a double entendre where a person is, you're trying to me. It looks like you're trying, like you're trying. Oh, you're trying to do it. But you're also trying to be me. That's what she's saying. Like, it looks like you're trying to me. That is intelligent to rap that way. And I think that it goes over some people's heads because I think that when I write certain bars, right? And I I sort of write in that way that Nikki writes. And I don't say that to be like, to seem cocky or to seem like, oh, I did my homework and things like that. Nah, it's like, the way that she raps, there is some underlying intelligence that's going on while she's rapping. And I think that other rappers rap to get the song done. And Nikki is rapping from a more strategic place. And I think that She's waiting for that artist that is rapping from that space because there hasn't been a rapper that is rapping from a place that is like, especially a female rapper that is rapping from a place of being able to spit double entendres and check a bitch in a song and it still be something that is... Um, loved by the by the crowd I guess you can say honestly I have enjoyed Nikki's music for so long a lot of people may think oh well you're just saying that because you're a barb or you're just saying that because you like her music but I've also enjoyed Cardi's music I've also enjoyed um, Lotto I've also enjoyed Megan Thee Stallion. And in that video that was deleted, I was actually saying in that video that I think that Megan has potential to be a great rapper because she she raps hard, but I think that also Megan has, she has experienced things within her come to fame that have, she has had to, um, focus or put her f focus towards what she has experienced in her rise to fame. You know, with her um, 
family and the legality things and things like that. But she does have potential to be great. I think there have been some people that have agreed with that statement and some people that have disagreed. But what I can say is that I think that there isn't really a artist. And and I want to say this. I think that Nikki, she keeps an open mind to those, even those artists that have, I heard, played her. But no, I want to say even those artists that have, because it's like Nikki, Nikki's saying, like, I don't get played. <laughs> she plays the game. But she don't get played. But what I want to say is that I think that Nikki keeps an open mind to those who have, in her eyes, wronged her. People that have not honored her or, you know, paid their homage the way that she has when she has rose to fame. And I think that Nikki has kind of been like, okay, well, you you have seen the many of times that I have showed homage to these other female artists that I was inspired by. And, you know, how many times these new artists that say that they were inspired by me haven't showed that same gratitude. And I think that to her, and I think to anybody else that has put in work in, within anything that they have created, it would seem disrespectful. Because when you have worked for something, even though you have to become aware of how to validate yourself, it is also great to, uh, to, to know that other people value you. You know what I'm saying? Even when um, they did something with all the female artists that were rappers. All of the female rappers, they were doing something with hip-hop or something like that. And um, I'm going to say it because it's, it's honest and it's coming from an honest place. Even though it's a um, past experience, Sweetie didn't post... Nicki Minaj within this um, post that she made and if you notice every person that has discredited Nicki in some way has somewhat I won't say plateaued but yeah in a, in a sense yeah and it's okay to need a person. I think that Nikki is that person that you would say that that you would that you would say, "Hey, if I wronged you, Nikki Minaj, can you help me understand how to become better at my craft, not the way that you do it, but the way that I do it?" These other female rappers. That's what I would expect for them to to say. And I think that ego keeps those, you know, <laughs> those rappers from doing that. And also their fans. And I think that sometimes the barbs sometimes keep Nikki from being in her soft, I guess you can say her soft era or her her soft feminine um, energy. But I think at the same time, Nikki is also take an initiative to be who she wants to be within the chaos of her fans and um, what other people think of her. And I think that it's already lonely being at the top of your career. And then with every being trying to say what is right for her is kind of like, well, I have to follow what my 
I have to follow what spirit is telling me to do. You know? And I think that with this most recent album, with Pink Friday 2 from Nicki Minaj, I think that it was an album where she truly... Although although she did have other people, you know, sort of um, convince her that certain songs should, should be a part of the album, I think that she truly delivered an album that she agreed was pleasing to not only herself, but to her fans. There are some people... I think that disagree with this being as good as it is because she isn't, um, I'm not going to say she's not totally not being Roman, but I think people want her to be that angry Sagittarian woman, not even angry, but combative and, um, kind of like bitchy towards the people that have wronged her. They they want her to check those bitches within her songs. But I think at some point you have to become aware that, you know, Nikki is a mother now. And I said this within that video. I said that once she becomes a mother, those things are going to kind of Becoming, you know, a parent is going to shift her into this new energy. And it's not that she's not going to be able to put a bitch in their place. Because I think that as a medium, I had to understand what it meant to be authentic. And what it meant to... When I think about drinking alcohol and smoking marijuana and using profanity. A lot of those things, when people become spiritually enlightened, they think that those things have to go away. And I think that the way that you use these things is depending on you as a person. Because it's not going to affect every person the same way and some people operate from a they or they feel that they operate from a higher level of conscious when when they are using these certain type of substances or experiences but I don't know if y'all can tell I'm tired child I'm tired tired (laughs) But what I can say is that um, in my previous video, I spoke about um, hopefully manifesting some chingling ching ching. And I manifested a hundred dollars. I ain't had to slip no dangling. Ah! Y'all know I ain't had no partner in a while. So y'all know I ain't been really doing that. Yeah. I thought that y'all probably laugh at that. Y'all know y'all be funny. Y'all be funny. (laughs) But people think some funny... Y'all think some funny things, right? Y'all think some funny things. Y'all funny. It could be just me. Maybe I'm funny right now. But anyway, I'm going to come back to y'all because, you know, I've been, I've been drinking, I've been drinking. But I still made sense with this video though, right? I did. Because although I have been, you know, y'all understand where I'm coming from. And I am very aware, even when I am... Consuming Chardonnay or, you know, things like that. Anyway, I'm going to enjoy this when I watch it again. 
and I'm going to make the rest of this video later on because there's so many more topics that we can speak about. So until we speak again. I also want to say that Nicki Minaj usually sparks a lot of conversation even when she drops an album. She sparks a lot of conversation. And what I do want to say is that if you haven't watched my reaction video and I'm aware that there's like uh, some places that just are silent, like is muted for some reason. I know that uh, in the first video, it is muted for the reason that um, the volume was too loud. But so many things that I spoke about, if you are aware of the uh, station head um It wasn't an interview, but the station head listened to all, like when she listened to her album and was speaking about the album. So many things that I said actually aligned with what I was saying within my video. Like, for example, in the first track, I spoke about how it sounded as if she was talking to a uh, older self her older self and her younger self were having communication and what i realized is that she's not only teaching her child within this song like saying that you know you know too much already but there were also some underlining things of where she was communicating to herself because she was saying things about um in that video or in that um station head um conversation she was saying uh, that she was it was as if she was speaking to her, her inner child and so if she's speaking to her inner child she's also speaking to her physical three-year-old child is what i realized but i also kind of realized that while listening to the song and i think that that's what i mean by people aren't able to comprehend her level of intelligence when she's writing lyrics. So to them, it sounds minuscule or, or small, but the way that I think about writing a phrase or a line or anything like that is more complex than people can understand. So when I'm thinking about the line, I'm like, oh, wow, that is really speaking volumes. But to a person that isn't like aware or consciously aware, they may think that it's just a minuscule line or they may think that it's just a whack bar because they're just not intelligent enough or a vibrational match to what I am creating. And I think that a lot of people just aren't aware enough of what she's creating artistically and I think that's sometimes what is a bummer I want to say this because it is important before I kind of you know rest a little bit but have any of you that are watching this video ever tried to create a song or create something you know artistic because I think that you will understand how difficult it can be to create something that makes sense you know for the listener not only to yourself but to the listener right because when you are creating with intention you understand that when people listen to it, they have it has to sort of kind of make sense to them. Although it makes sense to you because you're writing it. You have to make, it has to make sense to them. So if you don't understand what I'm saying, then you probably haven't tried to write something for yourself. But what I want to say is that if you do understand this, you understand how difficult it can be to write something that is actually, um, that 
everybody can relate to. I don't like child. What you got going? I don't have any. What you got going? Ah. I ain't know what was going on, but it was doing what it was doing. It's been doing that for a while. I hope it just don't keep doing it. I'm going to have to probably get that little ring light from TikTok or whatever. Child, don't make me do it. Anyway, I think that um, I was going to speak on something else, but no. Because it's just going to be a long ass conversation and girl, I ain't got time right now. Like, I got time, but I'm trying to get some rest. So, I was thinking about how when I create something, right? And I don't know why this phone is doing this. Hold on! I'm probably going to allow this to just be what it is right now. Because the screen is, like, timing out for some odd reason. And I'm probably needed to rest anyway because I've been drinking, I've been drinking watermelon. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people think from a place of trying to achieve success rather than actually creating something that they're going to love to listen to later on. Oh, and that was just, that was channeled because, you know... That is something I, the angel said, you can hear me. <laughs> For real, though, I think that a lot of people are creating to build success. And while that is very understandable, I think that when you create to truly make yourself happy and make yourself feel fulfilled, you know, to make yourself feel like, when I listen to the song, it actually helps me to heal. And with Billie Eilish, that's what I enjoy about her music. I think a lot of people enjoy that about her music because uh, she's been vulnerable with a lot of her songs. Like even when she was speaking about um, masturbation and things like that. Well, I don't think she spoke about masturbation, but she spoke about watching, um, you know, X-rated adult content. And for myself, even as a spiritualist, I think that we all have to, ex- we all experience getting through those addictions that we have. And we have to understand, are they truly addictions or have society placed that label on it and we have shame over what we truly enjoy? But anyway, the phone keeps timing out for some reason, so I'm allowed it to be what it is for right now. And I will come back with, um, you know, a more structured conversation around this. But I truly enjoy Nicki Minaj and what she creates because I think that it comes from a more thought out, experience and not in a way that is like oh I'm thinking it out so that it's great for the listener and not great for the creator but I think that with this album it's truly a um experience that is not only great for her but it's great for everybody that's listening also and I think that because she hasn't or she wasn't like um The way that she was with Queen, some people. Oh shit! That that's. I'm at eight, yeah. Because it wasn't like she was on Queen. Some people have an issue with it. Anyway, y'all see what's going on. I'm gonna talk to y'all later. Uh, uh later on, y'all get what I'm saying. Toodaloo. I am the queen, you my oppin' shit. The corniest bitches be poppin' shit. Everything offendy. You know I just dropped my shit. Put my pretty feet up on me. I call my boyfriend, then you get and beat up on me. <laughs> I am the wave, I only wave when I'm telling them bye.